Welcome to Fast Math Solutions on Math with EJD. In this video, we'll be dealing with this question to differentiate y equals the inverse of x, that's sine, sine inverse x. Okay. Um, at this point, I'd like to quickly clarify that, you know, I know there's a lot of confusion about the difference between one over, one over sine x, right? One over sine x, you know, one over sine x is cosec x, that's cosec x, right? And there is also y equals sine inverse of x. So in fact, um, it is very important to know the difference that this is actually what I like to call the reciprocal. This is the reciprocal of sine x, whereas this is the inverse of x and their treatments are actually different. So the question we have is to differentiate y equals sine, sine inverse x. So this is inverse of sine x, not the not cosec this time. So um, that difference should be clearly understood. All right, so how do we take care of this? We have y equals sine inverse x and um, here, now, to differentiate means to look to find dy dx. So if that is the case, how can we actually do that here? Now, from the look of things, there's no direct, um, except if you already memorized it, there's no direct way to just say dy dx equals something in particular. So you want to go step by step. So the first thing you may want to do here is to remove the sine inverse and see um, what you can, uh, how uh, you can move on from there, right? So of course, since you have y equals sine inverse of x. The way to undo inverse is to take the sine of both sides. So you have sine of y equals sine of sine inverse of x. So, so that this cancels this, and then you have sine y equals x. And that is how we got to this point. So you take the sine of both sides, and then you have sine y equals x. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, since we are looking for the y dx, is to take d dx of both sides. So you have sine y equals x. So you take d dx of sine y and d dx of x. That's you differentiating both sides. But as you can see here, this is sine y, not sine x. So um, it's difficult to take, I mean, to take the d dx of sine y is not so straightforward. So you have to break it down. Uh, since it's a fun since sine y is a function of y, then it's better to take ddf, d dy of sine y, and then you have to balance that up by multiplying by dy dx. So this is what you can call implicit function. So I'll be I'll be making videos on calculus very soon. So I'm going to take all of these things from the scratch to I mean so I'll explain everything uh in bits. Okay, so you have d dy now of sine y, which is more reasonable, but then to balance that out, you multiply by dy dx so that, of course, dy and dy can cancel and you still have your d dx that we started with. So that's the way to go. And d dy of sine y, of course, you know when you differentiate sine y, you get cos y, and then the d, dy dx is still there. And then d dx of x is like you differentiating x and that's one. So you have cos y dy dx equals one. Since what you're looking for is dy dx, then you can divide both sides by cos y, divide both sides by cos y so that this cancels out. And that is what leads to the next line where we have dy dx equals one over cos y. So the next thing is, you know, um, it's better not to leave your answer in terms of y, right? So how do we get rid of cos y? So, um, you know, this is a very popular rule in trigonometry that sine squared of y plus cos squared of y equals one. So if that is the case, what we have here is cos y. So can we get a replacement for that in terms of this? So we know that if sine squared y plus cos squared y is one, it means that cos squared y is actually one minus sine squared, y, sine squared y. That means you're transferring sine squared y to this side. And you have cos squared y equals one minus sine squared y. And of course, cos squared y means the square of cos y. So since you're looking for just cos y, you take the square root of both sides. So take square root of cos squared y, take square root of one minus sine squared y, and then square root of cos squared y simply just gives simply gives you cos y, and then you have root one minus sine squared y. Interestingly, if you remember where we are coming from, you remember you see that sine y is x, you know, sine y is x. 
definitely sine squared y is the same thing as sine y all raised to power two. But you remember that sine y is equal to x. So that means you can come this way. You have cos y equals square root of one minus sine y now is x. So um, so it means instead of sine y all squared, you have x all squared. And that gives you uh, cos y equals square root of one minus x squared. And from there, you remember your dy dx is one over cos y. So now cos y is square root of one minus x squared. Finally, dy dx is equal to one over square root of one minus x squared. And that's how it's been. Uh, if you have not subscribed to this channel, feel free to, to do that. And of course, press the notification bell so you can get um you can get notified whenever I release a new video. Thank you for listening. See you in the next video.